Hey guys, it's Pond, and is that spooky season? Yes, it is Halloween y time, so why don't we freaking look at something scary? And what's more scary than a bad movie? Yes, we are movie reviewing right now. It's amazing, it's a big step in my YouTube career. So why don't we look at one of those most critically known movies? SpongeBob, Sponge Out of Water. This movie did not need to be made, I'll just say that. But with a budget of $74 million and, you know, everyone wanting a sequel to the Spongebob movie, just kind of had to make it. But this movie suffers from what I like to call 20s reboot syndrome. The symptoms include pop culture references, bandwagoning on whatever is popular right now, and generally just wanting out of ideas. They already had Spongebob as superheroes in many of the episodes. They're basically bandwagoning on a bunch of superhero movies and time travel movies. We'll get to that. But there are only two pop culture references that I can make out, and the budget is $74 million. The animation is amazing. The show has the budget of a toothpick compared to this. I can see where the 70% rating is coming from, but I think it should be just a little bit lower. Here's my opinions on Sponge Out of Water. Our movie starts out on Pirates of the Caribbean, where we are shown the uh, antagonist of our movie. It's a pirate from the intro. I mean, I mean, Burger Beard. All joking aside, there's actually confirmed to be him in the ending, so... As you can see, he is on Bikini Atoll, trying to steal the Deus Ex Machina. I, I mean, the, the book. Man, this is way overdue. Get it? Because it's freaking sequel to the Spongebob movie. <laughs> Apparently this book tells the story of the past, present, and future of Bikini Bottom, which... What kind of damage could you do of that? Seriously. If you had a book that you could rewrite with ease of the past, present, and future of your life, I don't even want to know what you would do of that. Also, I feel kind of bad for the person that had to make that Krabby Patty. I mean, they had to get every single thing perfect while so it would just be a regular sandwich. And then we cut to Plankton in a freaking robot plane tank thing. Yeah, they have a giant fight scene with freaking Patrick and Spongebob and Sandy for some reason. And the scene does have a lot of good visual gags. Extra mustard, extra mustard, hold the mayo! Extra ketchup, extra mustard, hold the mayo! Extra ketchup, extra mustard, hold the mayo! And hopefully I'm not just going to point out some of the jokes and say, hey, these jokes are funny. When Plankton is finally defeated by running out of gas, which I can expect that to happen in a giant freaking robot, he gives Mr. Krabs his final penny. Which turns out the real plankton is inside of the penny, and the plankton that gave him the penny was actually a convoluted bot 3000. Seriously, made a robot that could fly a plane, respond to everyone's freaking comebacks, drive a tank, freaking maneuver a giant robot, and then sob in the side of the road. And if you say he was controlling him, how did he do it from a freaking penny? Anyway, so SpongeBob walks in a plankton trying to steal the crap formula, because. Spongebob always walks into the empty Mr. Crab's room, which sets off a security system to lock down the Krusty Crab. And when Plankton and Spongebob are fighting over it, it mysteriously vanishes. Which, once we've learned a little bit longer in the movie, it's actually Burger Beer that we wrote the story to get the Krabby Patty plot device. Mr. Crab's not sensing the formula in the general vicinity, blames Spongebob and Plankton. Apparently they teamed up to steal the formula, even though he told no. No, that's, that's not it, no. This and a creepy speech by Mr. Krabs leads to symptom one of 20's reboot syndrome. Fricking filler. This sequence of events leads to fricking time travel plots, stop motion dolphins, fricking apocalypse stuff, fricking Patrick, fricking Patrick, and all of that leading up to, oh yeah, this is about going out of the water. Let's do that. You don't understand how much freaking filler is in this movie. I edited the video so that the beginning of the Outer Water segment and the end of the movie. And the movie's only a freaking half an hour long when you do that. Yeah. That's not even long enough for like a 
a freaking direct-to-DVD movie, like a Disney cheap quote, let alone a freaking full-length film, expecting us to not see all of the freaking filler that's in it. The things I do for research and comedy. But oh no, how are they gonna make it to the surface? They can't breathe air like us humans can. Hashtag humble plan. We're going up there as if some fairy godmother shows up and helps us breathe air. Oh, finally something freaking interesting happens. They exploded and died and everyone's dies. And Thank you, magical god dolphin that I skipped over because you in that filler segment I was talking about. I've done all I can. The rest is up to you. I'll try. I'll try. Remember when I said a while ago that the animation is pretty good? Well, you can kind of say that with the CG, I don't know. They wanted the CG to be stylized, but they didn't know what style they wanted to stylize it in. Maybe they wanted it to be, look like the show. Maybe they wanted to have a different style. Maybe they wanted it to look like stop motion. Or maybe they just wanted it to look like crap. Seriously, why is Mr. Krabs a freaking cone? As I said before, the CG is pretty good, so I'm not gonna hug it too much on his cone flaws. So, shenanigans, and we end up going back to Burger Beard, which has made a very successful business off of the Krabby Patty. And being confronted by the things that he doesn't want to be confronted with, he does not kill them with the book that he has that he could write, and they disappear and never come back. No, that would be smart choice. What he does is he just writes them to just freaking go away for a while. But it turns out they have a page of the book, and they kind of just teleport in. But this time they have abs. Oh, and, and powers. Something, I don't know. The powers are Patrick likes ice cream, SpongeBob loves bubbles, imitation crabs, Squidward is bad at playing the clarinet, and Sandy's a squirrel. Glad we cleared that up. Also, the Hulk with the tiny head. That, that would probably be really funny, but right now it's just not. So, shenanigans, and we end up defeating Burger Beard. That's an accomplishment or something. Put that on your resume. Plankton says that he's being selfish, which... Why would you not be? You're the freaking antagonist of every episode. And we return to the undersea world from which we came for about an hour of filler. It appears that everything is back to normal. You know how it freaking ruined this ending? An epic rap battles of history reference between seagulls and a freaking god dolphin. Crap, we're finally freaking over with this. Oh, you took a freaking month to edit this. Oh. Well, it's not the worst movie in the world. Sponge Out of Water is definitely a great first movie reviewer movie. I mean, it has some problems, but I would pretty much recommend it to most people. If you don't like SpongeBob, you should probably better watch this. If you like Avengers, what are you doing in a freaking SpongeBob movie? If you're a fan of SpongeBob, I would recommend this movie. It might have some flaws, but it's a good SpongeBob movie. I'm planning on reviewing the first movie a little bit in the future, but I can't find it on footage right now, so I can do it after this, so might have to wait a while for that. Uh, but we will be back to game reviews in the next review, so see you all in the next video. Hopefully it's a pretty good one, it doesn't freaking take months to edit and freaking record and all that stuff. I might... I am planning on reviewing the first movie as well sometime in the future, but can't find enough. I'm in. I'm planning on watching. <coughs> ah. Why is that about to see the line, actually? Oh, my throat just hates me.